Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Four NPCs Around the Globe. Today it's only one NPC, the Of Summoner. As you all well know, not quite adept to their skills in summoning. It's trying to get some inspiration and master the art of calling wisdom from beyond the veil. Maybe from somebody with a different approach to the arcane, to the weird. So again, the Elf Summoner walks into the deep woods. He makes his circle and calls upon what lies beyond. This time, his Elf Summoner calls for inspiration and succeeds from the portal. A sultry melodic voice beacons and a vagabond walks through. People, this is SJ Tucker, <laughs> also known as Spide Mom, and in my opinion, a fae for sure. For those of you who know SJ and enjoy her work, her beautiful songs. You, you know, she is quite geeky and she works field. She does a lot of music inspired in fiction and fantasy. She has worked with uh, many people known within the medium, like uh, Satiros Brucato, which I believe is a friend of yours. And you recently did, did a... Oh, you got it right there. <laughs> I have props. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I, I, I have props too. My yes. trusty coaster. Oh. Yeah. Well, so, um, well, who knows SJ better than SJ? So why don't you give us a little intro then? <laughs> well, hello, and I'm so, it is, it is a true delight to have been summoned in this gentle fashion to spend time with all of you today. And especially with my summoner, I raise my cup to you, sweet friend. And I hope that we will get to make a toast face to face someday when the Hopefully. time is right. Okay. <laughs> I have been vagabonding and singing around the planet to people who need a song since early 2004 in this life. And that was when I decided that if I was going to make no money at all, I might as well be working for myself and doing something that I like and going and becoming a bard instead of working for somebody else who didn't particularly like me. So I told the day job, which was a music store, believe it or not, bye-bye. And I laid the groundwork to uh, learn as much as I could at independent music conferences and start to book my first tour, which was mostly consisting of pagan festivals, which is where I'm very, very well known to this day. And the flagstones of the path began to fall into place very beautifully. I think I have some, some very high powered guides on my side and also a great deal of, of privilege as someone with an American passport and someone who had loved ones that I could run home to if I needed to. I never really had to worry about not having a safe place to go and not having a roof over my head. And that's not true for all of us. So I acknowledge that first and foremost. But what has carried me through to this point as whatever level bard I am these days, I like I like to think I like to think I've made some progress. I'm, I'm in the in the in the the teens at least of what level bard I am. I I have to thank the sci-fi fantasy fandom communities all over the world and the pagan community all over the world and the witchy community because it is those two communities primarily and the places where they intersect and my friends in the tabletop RPG gaming worlds that have carried me and have said to me, we love your music. Over and over they have said, we love your music, please continue to make it and we will continue to support you. <coughs> okay. Well, today we're gonna talk with SJ about inspiration 
and how to bring that little piece of magic and whimsy to our games. Because, after all, well, at least fantasy games are in need of that fantasy, and we escape to these worlds looking for that. And it's hard to draw that inspiration when our daily lives and the world we see is, I guess, dull and grey. And SJ has mastered that. Uh, as a big fan, I can tell you she has mastered that. So, as for the first, you're welcome. As for the first <laughs> question, um, as a bard and as a vagabond, where can one find inspiration and master improvisation? Mm, well, my first suggestion would be to be brave like Bilbo Baggins and make sure that you go outside your door. Someone told me when I was quite young, when I was still a student, and I went to see another performer and I watched her show and I asked if it was all right for me to ask her questions after she was finished, if she had a moment of, of time that she could share with me. And she was very generous and very kind. And I said, how, how do I get to where you are? How do I master what you have mastered? How do I become the bard? that I hope to be. Mm -hmm. And her words to me were, play for everyone you can. And it's, it, gets, it gets tiresome, I know, to hear people say that no one, there, you, there, are, there are prodigies in this world, yes, but none of us get good at what we do without some practice. So it helps to, even, even when you're learning something like improvisation, make sure that you have the fundamentals written on your soul and you are not afraid to practice and that you can also defend the boundaries of your time to make time to practice. And then when you feel confident enough, if that is what you want, go out into the world and perform for others, share with others, trade songs back and forth with others. It doesn't even have to be in a performer audience relationship, of course. You can just come to find a song circle, a bardic circle, an open mic night, wherever you happen to be. I, I like to think that these happen all over the world because people have been making music together for as long as there have been people, as long as there have been, as long as there has been music. We have shared songs with each other. It's how we tell each other who we are. It's how we figure out who we ourselves are. And so that, that magic of exchange can only help you level up. And it takes some courage. It takes, it takes rolling for initiative. It takes a critical success or two, but you don't have to depend on those. As long as you are open, as long as you have some openness then the wisdom will come to you. And then what you do with it from that point on is your choice. That was, I have no words. <laughs> I, I have no words. It's all because of the tea. There's, there's, this is, this is tea of, um, oh gosh, this is tea of communication plus four <laughs> in my cup today. Communication plus four. We might talk about the tea, that, that thing that is related to SJ actually, we're probably drinking it at the end of the video. Uh, but yeah, uh, well, you people know that this channel is about RPGs, the RPGs to be precise. So taking from what SJ said, I guess that practice is really important if you want to play a game, if you want to roleplay, if you want to tell the stories, be a storyteller. And I guess, and I'm gonna put in my two cents here, Playing music and performing for everybody, it's, I would say, if I am brave enough, go a little bit beyond the basic and most popular games that are out there. Yeah, we all love Dungeons, we all love Fantasy, Bebo Baggins, Turtle, Tolkien. But there are other games that there is, there is Mage, there is Changeling. Empire, there the, the is PBTA, there are other games. They have many, many tools. And all those tools in these different games and systems will improve your your storytelling and your ways of learning things. In the same way, I guess, different genres of music explore different uh, 
instruments, approaches, and patterns of rhythm. Yes, you reminded me. You remind me actually of something that I wanted to try and find a good way to mention while we were okay. together, which is don't be afraid to listen to music that you are unfamiliar with. Don't be afraid to try an RPG that you're unfamiliar with, or if you are welcome, if the invitation is there, to play either music or an RPG with a group of people that you're unfamiliar with. Because you never know, as long as you're open to the experience, what could happen. And allowing for the possibility of delight <coughs> that you've never experienced before it's a tricky thing when we're all so cynical and we have to protect ourselves and our our physical and emotional well-beings as 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 hard as we do these days to have that openness but don't be afraid to to leave your comfort zone i guess if that's not an overused phrase don't be afraid to try don't be afraid to try new things whether it's an instrument you've never heard of before a type of music you don't normally listen to or a TTRPG that you've never tried. But even if you think you might not have a lot of fun, how will you know if you never try? Mm -hmm. Speaking about that, although not completely related, a little story about our TTRPGs and music. One of mm. the, I guess, important scenes that I can remember playing TTRPG, it was Dungeons, it wasn't an uncommon RPG. Um, we were at this Elf, Elven Festival in, in the desert and our dm just started playing sigur ross i don't know if you know sigur ross <gasps> yes. yeah yeah um it was olsen olsen and he started describing as the song plays you know the the, the weird instruments the the, elf, the elves play related to every sound in the song and how the song called a call upon the desert and we became in the music once with the desert and the festivity and oh in that moment i really just concentrated on that and, and, I, and I felt that the same way as well, SJ knows and we and you might at some point see um, as I guess I join SJ songs through these teas and again we're going to talk about that in a while but yeah um, that sort of exploration between I guess mediums ex expand your your vision of the game and that is not only music within an RPG, but also systems and approaches and the kind of story mm -hmm. the different RPGs tell. And marrying, mar blending things that you love, blending different things that you love, just to see how they overlap and how they can amplify each other. I can, I don't think that that's ever a bad decision to make. I mean, relationships are, are, are that blending of two people overlapping in the best of the best to help each other and grow. So yes, we do that yes, every yes. day. <laughs> well, this, the, those of us, those of us who know what's up, we do that every day. <laughs> those <laughs> of us who, who want to help each other and collaborate rather than, rather than compete and just come out on top. Yeah, that's where we're at. That's where I like to be. For sure. So finally up to question number two, I guess. Um, you're a pagan, as far as, uh, as far as I, I know. So as a pagan, yes. as a pagan, <laughs> what can you tell us about the representation of the occult in games <laughs> and its faithfulness to the original source? Well, I've had I've had several conversations with author friends lately about this very thing, and you could you know we could yes, we could complain it. about it all day. We could complain about it all day, and say that. Uh, such and such game really made no effort at all and and this is horribly horribly inaccurate and is this so inaccurate that it makes you laugh but you know laughter is good <laughs> laughter is good and if you are if you are working with a storyteller who knows more necessarily than who, who might know more than the source material or the source books that are available. Mm -hmm. And they're not afraid to share that with you and incorporate it into the story or the game system that you're using, then good things, good things are going to come of it. So even if inaccuracies are there, which I know that they are, it's not necessarily going to limit you or to limit what you can learn in 
in the context of paganism, in the context of gaming, in the context of folklore and mythology, which is different all over the world, no matter where you are. And there are ways to come to a sharing place and a learning place for all of that in and out of gaming that have benefits to you. And there are ways to study all of this and to absorb it and experience it that you can do in a respectful way that don't have anything to do with appropriation and have everything to do with mutual respect from the student and the source material, wherever in the world folklore or the world mythology that it comes from, wherever in world religion that it comes from. So good and bad, there are things that are going to always be inaccurate. <laughs> and that at this point here where we currently sit, there's not much we can do about that other than decide, well, whether or not whether or not this is true, maybe I will find out more for myself. Maybe I will find out more for myself and compare what I learn to what I see in the game. Mm -hmm. And that, that will, you know, if, if you make a choice like that, it will it will enrich your experience no matter what's written on the page. Okay. <laughs> well, what can I say about that? Um, I believe I mentioned this in our previous video we, with Shannon Stalker, if you already saw it. When I delve into game design, as far as the magic goes, there are like three approaches, there are three concepts, which is the the mechanical aspect of magic, you know, the system, the rules in which the magic within the game works, the lore, which is whatever fiction you create, and there is the occult factor, which is whatever you took inspiration of, if you took inspiration of something. So just so you have you, you can see those three things and um, when, when you see something, um, there are usually those three factors, for example. Pathfinder recently decided to take away the term phylactery from your games because it is an, religious, an item of religious significance within mm -hmm. Judaism. So it's like, mm, it's not the best representation. So we're just going to stop using the term phylactery. So I mean, that's okay. I mean, and there wasn't any like, fight against that, but... That's okay. I can mention a game that I don't think it is well known within the North American community. It's a Spanish game called Aquelarre, which is, a, I guess, a certified historical fantasy within Spain. So it mm. is historical Spain, Middle Ages, but all the folklore, all the myths, and I guess magic is real. So it is historical. You have, yeah. So the, within this, this world, the magic you can use really depends on your religion. So if, if you choose to make a Jewish character, you will only be able to cast because within, it is within your belief system, Jewish related oh. magic. If you're a Muslim character, because uh, Alan de Luz, there were Muslims in um, Spain, you will only be able to cast mm. magic related to Islamic beliefs and so on with Christians. That so, makes perfect sense at a very... And probably very helpful structure to be able to tap into. And again, in a respectful way, it's, I also think it's a good, it's a good thing to have people around in your, in your gaming group who are willing to let go of the things that don't serve the story or serve the group. And I'm not, I'm not saying throw the religious um, restrictions or, or certain very, very important mm -hmm. factors of real world magical practice that things may or may not be based on out the window. But it's just like the example that you gave, like this is, this is a great representation. So we'll just leave that out. And it's fine. It's fine. If everyone, if everyone in the group understands that, then why wouldn't you make a choice like that? Right? Yeah, I think then, that's beautiful. I mean, that game does have its things, but that, that approach, I think I have never seen anybody else do it. For example, I'm going to put mm -hmm. that out there just for, so you people know if you go into looking into this game, which was recently translated to English, because it is historical, um, the kind of things you can do, like, depending on your religion, also depend on the kingdom you are at. Maybe you won't be able to go as high socially if you're a Muslim living in a Christian kingdom. Um, also happens with sex, which is, I guess, the worst part of the thing. It's like, oh, you make a female character, Middle Ages, you cannot, I mean, this is, this is your job. You can choose from this job list. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you can, obviously, we know that TTRPGs are guidelines. Um, so you can just throw that out of the window if you, if you want to or not, <laughs> for sure. But um, just so you know, that out there, like little note, if you go searching for this, um, I don't know how accurate this game is on that, but that is an interesting approach. Um, 
saying, okay, this is Christian magic. I mean, within the black, a stereotypical black magic and dark magic, um, there is Islamic and, and Jewish magic. So depending on what character you make, you might be able to get within those, uh, I guess, power sources. Just so, just so you people know. Question number three. Yeah, my favorite number, actually. Um, can you tell us a way to build more wonders and magic when doing creative work? And my favorite question. Your favorite number, my favorite question. It all comes back to being open. And I know that I said this before when we were talking about question number one. But be open, be open, be open, be open to experience, be open to the magic that could come. Uh, we've we've mentioned the lovely Seder Phil Brucato already yeah. in our time together. And and I've got I've got my copy of Mage 20th edition, 20th anniversary sitting right next to me on the couch. <laughs> he recently in an interview for his new Red Shoes novel, which is funding on Indiegogo right now, as we said, it's an urban fantasy. And has and a song I, by SJ. I highly recommend it. Yes, yes. And if, if the campaign succeeds, then I get to write more music for it. He said recently that we have a tendency to let the world force us to forget how magical our lives are in the first place. And I believe that he is correct. I believe that he is correct. And so that means that along with practicing your craft, practicing your storytelling, practicing your music, practicing whatever it is that you love and want to and want to make sure that you excel at. Also practice that openness. Practice being available for the magic to come and find you, if that makes sense. And if it sounds too out there, then sorry, not sorry. I'm, I'm not taking it back. Be open to the magic to come and I think that it will find you if it you know if it hasn't already then just just build upon the experiences that you've had in the past whether whether it was paranormal whether it was just a magical moment in storytelling whether it was a magical moment in creating something whether just for yourself or for others to enjoy build upon that and let that be something that you can use to fight against the darkness, as it were, to fight against those voices that say magic isn't real, there's no magic in the world, you shouldn't make time for gaming, you shouldn't make time for music or storytelling because it's not as important as all these other things. You can use the experiences of magic that you have had in your own time on this planet to remind you, yes, it is. Yes, it is as important. Yes, there is magic and yes, we can find it. Yes, there is creativity worth making time for. And yes, it is just as important as everything else that we must do in any given day, if the time allows. It is important. And so having it, having it be a priority in your heart and in your life will allow for more of it to come. And that it's, and I'm not trying to get into mm -hmm. that, that headspace of the people that say, oh, just, just manifest it and it, and it, and it'll happen. That's not, that's not what I mean at all. And please, please do not mistake me. And I'm sorry if that's how it comes across, but I really do mean, I really do mean not talking yourself out of potential wondrous things to come into your life. And don't say, no, this is this is impossible. This, nothing this wonderful could happen to me. Please, please, please don't ever do that to yourselves. Because the more open you are able to be, then the more chances you have not to miss something good that comes along. And I know that we all, we all have to do the work as mm -hmm. well as the magic. We all have to do our chores as well as our creative pursuits and the things that make us happy. But we all strive for balance. And why not leave room in the balance that you craft for yourself for more things that make you happy, for more wonders, for more, for more magical memories, for more happy mm -hmm. memories to be made? 
that reminds me of this uh, I guess quote by Terry Pratchett. I, <laughs> I guess I guess you know which one I'm talking about. Oh, we're Uncle talking, Terry. Yeah, if we're talking about fantasy. Humans need fantasy to be human, to be the place <laughs> where the falling angel meets the raising ape. <laughs> yes. Oh, gosh, that um, that's another thing. Now we've mentioned we've mentioned dryad tea while we've been together. If I hadn't been open to making new friends and sort of leaving my comfort zone, I might never have made friends with Ruby, who is the founder of Dryad Tea, who has now created all of these loose leaf tea blends inspired by my music. And if if I had thought, what? No, that's too weird, or not been at the same pagan festival with her, if I'd not been a, if I'd not been willing to travel to Colorado and suddenly we ended up at the same sound check together where she was also singing, then she and I might never have connected. So that's what I'm talking about. Like that's the context that I want to present to you with respect to being open for more magic to come, being yeah. open for more beautiful experiences to come. Because I don't I don't know what the circumstances had to be for me to meet her, but I I know that my life would be much less bright if I had not met her and I wouldn't have all this wonderful tea to drink that just happens to share a name of one of my songs and now several of my songs. Yeah. And I had to, I had to message Ruby and tell her that I was talking with you and, and how I can't stop smiling. Uh oh, and um, well, I guess if you take it, well, I don't know the timing of this step back, um, back from that, if you weren't in a con either, you wouldn't have songs about this. Precisely, yes. All the way back in 2006, and Catherine Valenti, who wrote the Fairyland series and many other beautiful things besides, was at an event in the New York area called LunaCon with me. And I came because, I came because a friend invited me to come and said, we will make sure you have space to give a concert and met Kat by chance. And she and I became friends and it turned out that she had already heard some of the music that I had released. And I didn't have a whole lot of it at the time. So I was kind of astonished that she knew who I was and just went and had lunch on a whim. And you just, just be open to things, be open to saying yes when people say, do you wanna come and have lunch with me? And we can talk more. And I know it's not always safe to do that, but if you feel safe, let the opportunity come. Let the opportunity come because now Catherine and I are the, the greatest of friends and I have written stacks and stacks and stacks of songs inspired by the stacks and stacks and stacks of her books. You're exactly right. I don't, I don't know what the right circumstances were for that to happen, but I know that I was, I was willing to allow it to happen. I was willing... I was open at the time to talking to this this beautiful person who said she'd heard my music somehow when not that very many people had and wanted to, and wanted to talk some more and just wanted to go have a cup of coffee or whatever. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of the good that could come from that. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I, I discovered cat books from your songs. I, I found your music. And and I, I love to hear that. Thank you for telling me that because she's, you know, she's on the New York Times bestseller list all the time. And, and it, it tickles me to no end. It makes me smile when people come and say, I didn't know about her. I didn't know about Kevin Lenti's books at all until I heard your songs and vice versa. I love it. I love that for her. I love that for myself. And I love that for people who find either one of us or both of us. Oh, one yeah. Because of the other or whichever way it happens. Yeah, my favorite um, books from her are the Orphan Tales, which honestly deserve much more love. I don't know they're why. They're so beautiful. Yeah, and like they're not even like on the top, like m most known ones. I don't know why. But at <laughs> some point, it's like I was doing some research on your songs. Like these are inspired on a book or something. <laughs> and I'm so Could proud of you for going and investigating more when you learned that because those books are devastatingly beautiful and if anyone is curious look up uh look up Kat Valenti on YouTube she has readings 
of every bit of the orphan's tales oh, yeah, from yeah, sure. when the first quarantines began that she did for us night after night after night until we got through both of the books well, and these are not small books people <laughs> yeah that is some love and dedication that those are well I she put even... on makeup for us a yeah, lot sure. <laughs> just to read those on instagram and then to repost to you well, just, just to put a phrase to actually they are one one plate because of legal reasons yes but yeah. thank you for remembering that I, I heard you have that thought yes it is not it is not an audiobook it is a one woman show it yeah. is a play for legal reasons <laughs> absolutely um so yeah well the, the, and that's how i that's how i got um that's how i got away with my own derivative work and my own little little reading performances <laughs> from the orphan's tales as well that are on the records that i released to go along with those yeah well the whole point of the of the quote i was saying you know about the falling and you're only rising ape is that if we don't believe in magic in, in those things in the in the ephemeral beauty how can it become real so, so somebody believe in going to the moon somebody believe in finding a, a, a cure for cholera i don't know and they work and it became real and if we don't believe in magic in in these beautiful moments of wonder how can we ever find them <laughs> bravo oh well, i'm just paraphrasing master pratchett so <laughs> i mean bravo it's to important him. It's important we like like we like we touched on earlier our our stories our stories help us remember who we are and help us tell each other who we are and terry pratchett is going to be part of that forever now yeah yeah he's so um i guess we have a little bit of time so regarding the rpg things you've done in the past i do know um that one of your videos the dnd song you have is related <laughs> yeah is related to <laughs> darkness rising yes that was another that was another happy accident that was another magical experience that happened and it it is all down to our dear friend filmmaker lionheart ben dobbins who is in uh, Vancouver, BC these days. Ben had come on a whim and out of the goodness of their heart out to the Olympic Peninsula, which is in the very Northwest of Washington state on the map. It's beautiful out there. It's wild, it's cold. The trees are massive when you get out to the actual edge of the Pacific Ocean there. And we were, finishing up filming for my Neptune music video for my Neptune song. And this was this was 10, 11 years ago now, but it's it's a memory I will always carry because it was on the ferry back home from the peninsula back to the mainland side, back to the mainland side side of Puget Sound in Washington State. I sang that parody uh, my my D and D parody, which is a parody of a, a, to the tune of the Napoli, by a group from the UK called Show of Hands, and mm -hmm. they they graciously gave us what little go ahead we needed to make a music video for it. But I sang that for Ben on the ferry, <laughs> and Ben said, "So I have a proposition for you." And what Ben wanted to do was get the gamers darkness rising cast together with me at a gaming store in tacoma in federal way tacoma washington and just film a music video for that parody on the spur of the moment he had heard it one time he heard me sing it once and said we're gonna do this and it was less than a week later that we all got together and shot the video and ben decided to make it one of the special features on the DVD for the darkness rising. <laughs> it's amazing. It was incredible. It was incredible. And it was the easiest, smoothest video shoot of any kind that I have been part of to this day. We were finished with everything, all the work we needed to do half an hour ahead of schedule. Any of you who are filmmakers know that this, this never ever happens. And if you don't believe me, that's fine, but I'm telling you it's true. And it was just such a dental experience. We, I think we all had a wonderful time and ate um, 
ate lots of terrible snacks. <laughs> I'm seeing the video, I can get that. Okay, so just a, a parenthesis, of, you know, for those of you who don't know uh, Darkness Rising, it is this, I guess, a video story about a guy that is finishing a, a, a model he has been designing for years and years and years, and as he finally, you know, play tested, that is the that is the fantasy story you see, and with all the quirks and and whatnot that the players bring in the story, you know, weird pit jokes, uh, a monk that isn't supposed to be there, and it's really <laughs> it's really it's really funny. And Ben, I should say that none of that would have happened if. Ben had not said yes to helping us finish the Neptune video, and we had not in turn then said yes to helping Ben shoot some footage for Journey Quest, which is another series. That Journey that Quest same group is amazing. It's brilliant. I love the, Journey Quest the, so the, much. The concept, Highly recommend. The, it. Yeah, the concepts <laughs> within the world on Journey Quest, uh, you know, the the, ma the magic, the weird magic that the main character has, and I am not going to spoil. It's it's beautiful. Like the, the artist. And it's land. gaming. Yeah. It is a gaming series. It is a TTRPG brought to life. And as and that's true for the gamers and the gamers Dortmund's Rising as well. And they that that group was the first group of, of any kind that I was ever aware of that was doing that kind of thing with film and doing it their own way. And they're still going. They're still making content all the time. It's amazing. It's very inspiring. And that, well, the questions I have, I don't know if any, is there anything else you want to talk about? Any questions you have for me? Because I have, I have things in December and I have things that are going. So I would say, uh, let me invite everyone to a site called onlineconcertthing.com where we have our online shows and myself and Heather Dale and lots of other musicians who are very, very friendly to the TTRPG and fantasy worlds. Come and see an online show there if you like. I have one, the next one after my November concert will be December the 20th, so right at midwinter. And I know that I have one, I have. I already have shows scheduled for January and February as well. So I will I will continue to give shows there, even, even if we get to a place where the world opens up again and I can tour and give face-to-face -face in person shows more regularly again I'm still going to keep doing online shows because I love them so much and they're part of me now and then if there is time if you all see this in time please look up the Indiegogo campaign for Red Shoes which is Phil Brucato's new novel and Phil is our friend who put heart and soul into Mage the Ascension, Werewolf the Apocalypse, Changeling the Dreaming, and Deliria, which is the game that he was repping when I met him in 2004. And Phil has been my friend for almost half my life now. And so I admit that I am very, very biased toward his work, but this story, Red Shoes, is so compelling as an urban fantasy not least because there is so much magic in it, but because the person whose story you are being told, the person who is sharing their story with you is learning everything that she learns and going through what she goes through and finding out what kind of magic already exists in the world where she lives without the promise of becoming a sorceress at the end or becoming something grand. She goes through because that's what is in front of her. And as we know from the Tiffany Aiken character in Terry Pratchett's books, you do the job that is in front of you. And she does the job that is in front of her and allows magic to come into her life. And it's beautiful. So look up Red Shoes on Indiegogo and please consider getting your pre-order of Phil's book. The audiobook is already done. The print book, they will put it in order as soon as the campaign closes and the money comes in. And there are stretch goals, and one of those includes more music written by me. And we hope that it succeeds. Amazing, amazing. Well, that being said, um, now you know SJ Music is out there. It is really calling to us, um, I guess, geeks, dogs that love PTRPGs. <laughs> Um, you know that work is deeply related to fantasy and drinks. So if you want to read a book and that is along those lines, 
do check her friend, Kat Valente. Yes. Um, and I am I am easy to find on Spotify and all of those places. For those of you who are wondering, just type in my name and you should find lots of things to enjoy. Yeah, um, just as it is written down in the video, SJ Bucker is that. Um, what can I tell you more? Um, well, yeah, those books, is not, she doesn't have only fantasy, she has fiction. Uh, uh, a recent, I guess, like horror book that just came out. Um, yes, and, uh, and a Mass Effect, a Mass Effect tie-in. And uh, a Minecraft book also. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, she has a lot of things. And yeah. So, if you, for example, uh, again, if you like World of Darkness, Changeling, and all that, and if you want to drink a song or a book or a book and a song, mm -hmm. again, and I speak of somebody who drink these with the song to feel the whole experience. Yes, not only drink them, but you share your experience yeah. as you're drinking the tea. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is not going to read. Yeah, dry a tea, also going to be down there. If you want to delve into that and experience SJ music in a different way. Also, dry a tea has a lot of geeky things as well. A lot of some, I guess, D&D and RPG inspired Loosely inspired teas as well. So many, those. so many, and 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 tea infusers with dice on yeah. the ends as little charms to keep them from falling into your cup is just brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know, D20 tea infusers. So well, there you have it. Those are a bunch of um, beautiful creations and tools that can help you build that bardic inspiration that SJ has mastered throughout the years. And hopefully this will help you in whatever artistic endeavors you delve into, being a storytelling, music, painting, and whatnot. It is I... bewitching and fit for a fair, I guess. As, as and I would say, I would say, I would invite everyone as well. It's feel free to share with me on social media if you like. I I'm pretty easy to find. So if you are inspired by something that is also connected with me. I would love to hear about it. There you have it. That's how this interview happened. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's don't, what got us sitting here. Don't be afraid to ask. I just reach out. Well, that being said, with tear in his eyes, the elven summoner is without words on the amount of knowledge and inspiration Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Um, much knowledge and inspiration. Now, now I understand that calling upon the veil to different realms is not just understanding the words and decisions and runes and calling and reaching through to bring someone in it is understanding and connecting with those worlds. You have teach me that as Jay back upon by of such. I mean, thank you for that. Okay, now now I need the tissue. Come on. Aww. <laughs> Aww. And hopefully uh, I will improve my craft, my summoning in the future. It will work I have best. No doubt. I have no doubt of that, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. The oven up summoner reopened the portal for the vagabond bard to step back into her own. As she goes, it closes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and with that, we are done, people. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Amazing. And with that, with people, we are done. And thank you again for sharing this time with us. Thank you, SJ, for being with us today. It was amazing. And I hope only thing we have talked about today will help you in your inspiration search and you can improve your craft. So, yes, we will see you next month, hopefully with somebody else, some other summon master or mistress of sorts. So we can keep talking about TTRPGs and all the things that can be related to to them and the craft of telling beautiful stories. Until next time, bye bye.